Hello and welcome to the second part of our interview with Gregor Gregerson here at Silver Bullion in Singapore. Now we're going to take a look at the reserve, which is the new building that is currently under construction. The Megavolt, I would say, a superlative project. It's incredibly big, as you can see. And there's also remodeling work going on. That means when we go right in, it can get a little noisy. Maybe you can't understand everything 100%. That's just part of it. We can't shut down the construction site now. Gregor, thank you very much for the tour. Perhaps you could give us some brief information. When did you start the project here? When did you buy the building and how big is it? Yes, so 2020 our old warehouse became too small and we knew we needed a bigger warehouse. We were very lucky because we were in the Covid crisis, banks didn't want to give loans. That meant it was hard for people to buy buildings. But we just had 40 million dollars in the bank, which we had accumulated over the years, and we found this building which had a price tag of 18 million Singapore dollars. A year before that it was 28 and you almost couldn't say no even though it was actually way too big. Then we looked at other buildings that were half the size and cost the same and said it doesn't really make sense to buy something like that if we're going to buy something like that. To buy something like that when we could buy something like that. And so the decision was made to buy the building. There are a number of reasons, I'll explain them when we do our walkthrough. Why this building is excellent for storing large amounts of gold and silver. And it will probably be the largest storage facility in the world for gold and silver, or at least one of the largest in the world. So when it comes to capacity, because we can store about 15,000 tons of silver, that's up to 28% of the silver deposit as above ground known reserves. That's the statistics from the Silver Institute. So we can store more silver here than the whole COMEX system and Shanghai Gold Exchange combined. I think there's a vault in China that's even bigger or a little bit bigger. So we checked with companies like Reuters and they didn't know of any bigger storage now. So the biggest they knew was 5,000 tons. That's not to say that there isn't anything bigger. But from the commercial side, they wouldn't be very well known. So it really will be a superlative project in the truest sense of the word when it's finished. You guys are also located right here at the airport. So that's also a good location strategically, isn't it? If you want to drive in and out with the precious metals. Now an airplane is coming. Now it's getting a bit noisy. Yes, well. The building will be an iconic building. It will have 3,600 square meters of onyx, which will be backlit. That's about one inch of glass, one inch of onyx. That's kind of marble, and then another inch of glass. If you take LED light from the back, you can then illuminate that. So that the building then has practically a golden natural illumination. So at night, when you turn this on? Exactly. When you land in Singapore, especially at night, and you look down from the plane on the left side, you'll see the building very clearly. Very good. This stays like this. The onyx facade will be there in front. So on the other side of the building, three-fifths of the building has an aluminum facade. Where you can see parts of it now. Not everything is installed yet because there are still some cables to be installed and so on. As soon as that is finished, this cover will be removed. Two fifths of the building is this onyx installation. The onyx is already all there. It's just a matter of getting certain scaffolding done now and then. That will be installed pretty quickly. Great, let's move on, shall we? Right, on to the next item. Okay, this is the main storage for silver. You can see it's like a hangar, 32 feet high, about 20,000 square feet. That's about 1,700 square feet. What makes this warehouse very valuable is the floor.
the floor can hold 90 kilonewtons of weight. To put that in comparison, a parking garage normally has 2 kilonewtons. That means we can put 45 times more weight on this floor than a parking garage. That means I can store at least 9 tons of silver per square meter. In practice, that means that we can stack silver 12 meters high, so about where the second beam is. And that gives us a very, very high efficiency of storage. And that's one of the things that gives us these large capacities. Now, the idea was not we have to create 15,000 tons of capacity. It was simply consistent with the purchase of this building where we then asked ourselves how we could optimize it. And of course, it makes sense to stack 12 meters high because the floor is so strong. It wouldn't make sense to make it six meters high and leave half the capacity free. In other words, we really have a massive capacity, not only to store silver, but also other metals such as indium or germanium, for example. Those are industrial metals that are very valuable, so costing around $500 a kilo, so a similar price to silver. And the big advantage we have now is there have been several thefts in Rotterdam and other locations. So now these metals can't be stored in normal storage facilities because they've just become too valuable. But these metals take up too much space to store them in a traditional vault. And here we're now building a capacity with all the security that's needed, but also the high capacity to store these metals efficiently. So just to understand that again, this is now here the first vault that we're at. And then in the vault, there will be other vaults, we'll see those in a moment, in which gold will then be stored. Exactly, in this space, practically only the... ...cheaper precious metals are stored, and valuable industrial metals. In euros, we are talking about 600 euros per kilo. Gold, which costs more like $60,000 per kilo, that goes into other vaults. And I'll show that in a moment, how gold is stored. The silver bars that are stored here, that's about 32 kilos, they're stored up and so on. That means it's very difficult to even pick up such a commodity and run away with it. What you see here now, it's still pretty raw. The walls here are going to get another wall, another concrete wall that's going to be installed now soon. The roof is going to get a new internal roof. And if you look up here now, you can see this silver cliff, that's what we call it. It's practically a meeting room where people can sit and then from 24 meters high, they can practically look into this warehouse. So up there where the balcony is? Right where the balcony is. The lower opening, that's an experience center, so that's for people to also look down into the warehouse. And then further on here in front of us, that's a recording studio. That's where the videos of you guys will be produced in the future. Right, so next year when we do another video like this, we can do it in the recording studio up there. Right. All right, now we've gone a little bit further here. We're still on the second floor. The huge hangar like room, so that's where the silver is stored. The gold on the other side, that goes into a class 2 vault like this. Can you please explain what that means, class 2? If you store gold and silver, then that also has to be insured. That is always the case. 
A good insurance is important for an investor to know that it is also well stored. The insurance company in turn specifies what safety precautions have to be taken so that firstly you get the insurance, secondly so that the premiums can also be kept low. And when it comes to the best prices, the lowest premiums, the standard for gold storage is is a United Laboratories Class 2 vault. So that's a standard that exists in the United States. In Europe, there's a different standard. So that's why this UL? UL, that's right, United Laboratories. If you have that standard, then you can practically reduce your insurance costs. Now, a vault like this one, it can store something like two. $2 billion worth of gold. How many square meters does this vault have? I'll have to look that up later because that's one of our bigger ones that are being built now. Okay, now we just welded in the vault. You can see so beautiful. Exactly. To give an idea of the weight of these units. So each one of these panels is about two tons in weight, 2,000 kilos. So if you take this together, then you're looking at at least 40, 50 tons in weight just in steel of this vault. Wow, what is class 2 for? How long does it take to drill through it? So about an hour or so. So with the vaults, it's basically about to slow someone down. So now if somebody comes in with all the right equipment and so forth to break in somewhere so quite professional, then that standard is to slow someone down for at least an hour. Unless you have explosives, armor-piercing explosives and so forth, but they make a lot of noise, of course. And then it's a matter of detecting that. And that's where lasers, as usual, contact sensors, vibration sensors, they're very important because you can see when somebody's drilling something and so on. Then CCTV cameras and so on. And all of that is then linked together redundantly. Then it's a matter of, if something is discovered, how fast is the response time? If the police are four minutes away now, and you have an hour before someone comes in, then you have a lot of buffer time. Those are kind of the considerations. In the big picture, Singapore is a very, very safe country. It's practically an island. And the insurance companies are actually not very concerned about theft from outside because the state itself is already too secure. That's why the insurance companies are mostly concerned about making sure that there are no mistakes, that there's no inside jobs, that there's no internal theft of anything and so on. So a lot of the backup methods are based more on that, rather than being very concerned that someone is going to come in and steal from the outside. The combination of all these things makes it all very, very secure. And with that, we can get the insurance just very cheaply. If you think about it, for example, if you now reduce the insurance by zero, 1%, per year in a warehouse like this is full, then that's 200,000 euros a month. This means that it is worthwhile investing in this type of vault and building these capacities because then the costs of storing more gold are very, very low. And that's one of the big advantages we have with this storage, because just like with silver, as with gold, we have these large capacities. And then we can rent them out to other banks or to other companies, as well as to private individuals and so on. All right, and here we are still on the first floor. And here behind me are 10 more of the class 2 volts. 
that we saw before. That's mainly used by us while these are here with Felice. For private companies, banks and so forth. We've also used several of those vaults to then break those down into 30 smaller vaults so that people can store up to 300 or 500 kilos of gold in their own vault. In the big vault with the insurance and with the low insurance costs that are enabled by having a vault like that. And if you look here for a moment, this is again the view into the big silver vault from another perspective. And behind us here on the side is our own power station. So you have your own power supply? Right, the building, this was a high voltage facility before. We don't need that much power, so that means we've now rebuilt that with... The building behind us is practically the new power supply. The power consumption of the new building only needs half. And we will have 280 kilowatts of solar panels on the roof. When the building is lit, that will take about 56 kilowatts. When the building is that means we can generate about five times more energy than the outside lighting uses. You can still sell that from that point of view. In Singapore, it's like you don't have to heat here. That's what it looks like, yeah. But you do have to cool. That's why a lot of energy is used for cooling. The large vault we were just in, this huge room, will have passive cooling because the heat naturally goes up, of course, and we have a little bit of extra pressure from the other cooling system that we can use to the heat from above and can bring the temperatures down another two or three degrees. So we don't really need any cooling at all for the big room, which is two-fifths of the building, so that increases the efficiency tremendously again. And then this onyx facade, like the aluminum facade and so on, is kind of like a sunshade that reduces the consumption of electricity again. And the combination of all these things will then push the electricity consumption down by quite a bit. That was one of the ideas that we wanted to do, environment, but also cost. You don't really need to cool silver down now. That can be stored in heat. But the building will now have a lot of art on the second and third floors. And that's where you need all the redundancies, of course. One air conditioning system is not enough. You always have to have two. And electricity-wise, you have to have at least two backups. So one main system and then a system that can be turned on if the main system is not working. A second system that will be turned on if the backup system is not working. So that gives you a triple backup. So we can control the temperature exactly. We have the nitrogen fire system, so we don't use water for extinguishing, but gas, at least in certain zones. Nitrogen. Exactly. And these are all the systems that are now being installed. That's all infrastructure that has to be installed that you have to think about first. As a normal person, you don't even think about such things at the beginning, what you need to build up such a safe. Yes, that's why the building took about a year of planning before construction even started. Another half a year to get all the permits. Now we're about a year into construction and we're going to be about be finished in October, November 2023. So that's another good eight months or so. Okay, now we're up to the fourth floor. The fourth floor has a zone where art is stored. We have a vault which is built specifically for watches. We have 12,500 lockers and we have a section here. 
uh, wir, wir haben eine Sektion hier, wo uh, where you can give lectures for about 100, 120 people. If we look in that direction for a moment, there's a staircase being built, which will connect the fourth floor with the fifth floor. If we go in this direction, we have the boxes here. We have the boxes here. These are safe deposit boxes that still have to be installed. So just under 13,000 of them. And here we have another class 2 vault. These are again the same ones that we saw on the second floor. What makes this building so special is how strong the bones of the building are, the foundation, but also the floor. We're on the fourth floor now. This still has 30 kilos of Newton floor loading. That's still 15 times stronger than a parking garage. That's why you can still store that kind of weight on this fourth floor. How many tons does a door like that weigh? So a door is typically two tons, so 2,000 kilos. But it's relatively easy to open. It is counterweighted. You just have to be careful. If you ever wind it or squeeze it, it goes forward quite a bit. You have to stop it right again. And there's a glass plate inside, right? So if someone tried to break into it, it would break and secure the thing. With these technologies, with these class 2 volts and so forth, that's usually how they have different layers. So they have different zones. One zone is built in such a way that if you try to break through now with a diamond stick like that, that it breaks a little bit. If you pull it out again, then something falls in and it practically closes again. That's one of the techniques that's involved. To get this UL class 2 standard. And that's going to be used for art now? Yes, on the fourth floor, these vaults will also have the nitrogen fire system, etc. We've built them in such a way that they're ideal. To store very valuable things for the long term, which are easily vulnerable. So the valuables need a stable temperature, where the humidity is well controlled. And in case of fire, water is not used. One reason that we are doing this now on the fourth floor is here in the back zone is now being built an auction room. There's another larger auction room on that side. We have received permission from the Singaporean government to Singaporean government that we can do auctions here, so that's allowed from customs. That means we hope that we can now work with companies like Sotheby's or Philips or other big auction houses. So that art, etc., that is now also stored temporarily or also long term, can also be auctioned here. We are a duty free warehouse. We have this very strong insurance, $800 million anyone lost for anything that can be lost up to $800 million. So that means the insurance is there, the security is there, the duty-free warehouse is there. The infrastructure is being built now. Exactly, the infrastructure is there. We have a kitchen on the sixth floor that we use to host events parties, etc., up to 100, 120 people, etc. We have a bar, etc., so that we can practically style that, so that it is also a very pleasant environment. So an all-in-one center where you can find everything on asset protection. Ganau. The first, second, and third floors are practically the high security sections in which gold, silver, art, etc. Whiskey, maybe wine is also stored. And then the fourth and fifth floors. These are the floors where people can practically come visit their lockers, participate in auctions and also have parties. We already have a number of companies now. 
big brands also in fashion and so on that are very interested in having exclusive events and so on. That is with the idea of this building. Yes, it's nice that you can also hold such exclusive parties or events here. I hope that we will be able to organize a few seminars here again in the future with our Goodbye Matrix community. Then you as a viewer will be able to see everything here in person in Singapore when it is finished. So that will still take a few months. If we go on here now, here. Here is normally a door. A standard door with two tons. The reason that this door is here is because another vault is being built here. And to install a door like this, you need cranes and so on. Because the door is too big to use the elevator. That means you practically have to knock down a wall and then use a big crane from the outside to, to install such a door because of the weight. That's why the door has to come first and then the other things have to be built on later. Was this wall torn out and then closed again? This is a space for artwork, so it's an exhibition space. That's what this zone will be used for. This whole zone is behind another internal security zone. So we have practically no controls when you come in. The building is divided in such a way that there are different zones. We have certain security sections so that not every person who comes into the building has to go through every through every airlock. So that one is practically not controlled if you don't need it. And if there is a situation now where you have to do it, then it is done and otherwise not. So the whole building has been optimized in such a way that you can do events and other things without having this very intrusive security that you would otherwise have in certain vaults and still have the security that you need. This vault here, this is going to be the vault for the watches, by the way. There will be about 2,000 watches stored there, each watch on its own window, so that it's turned accurately, so that it has movement, because high-value watches, 100,000 euro watches and so on, If you put them in a safety box and then leave them there for 10 years, then that's usually not good for a watch. Ideally, it would have to be moved every now and then. And that's what we do here with the windows. We also have a watch workshop, which is a lab with watchmakers from Rolex, AP, etc., who can do the maintenance of the watches. as well as the authentication. So the idea is when a watch comes in here, it's been checked that it's the real thing, that checks have been made, that it hasn't been stolen and so on. And once it's in here, it's also a duty-free warehouse, so there's no tax. Okay, so you can trade among yourselves purely theoretically. And yes, then practically as the owner of the watch, you can say, I have a 100,000 euro watch, I want to borrow 70,000 euros and use my watch as collateral. The interest rates are currently around 6% or so. That's the same thing you're already doing with the precious metals, with the PYP marketplace. Right, the precious metal system that can then expand with watches. It has the same collateral as the gold and silver, so with the sweeper fund and so on, so that for somebody who's the backer now, there's virtually no risk there, whether it's gold or a watch. And what else you can do, if you have this watch now, you can, if you're interested, you can practically say, I want to accept, accept bids, so I accept inquiries, bids from people who are interested in my watch with a minimum value of X. So now if I have a 100,000 euro watch, I can say, I accept 120,000 euros or higher bids. And if I'm interested, 
then I can practically sell the watch. We practically earn only a small margin on the thing as a middleman, practically from custodian. But the value of the watch and most of the money then just flows between the customers directly. And with that, over time, it would probably become a very exclusive, high-quality collection of watches. Unique. I haven't seen anything like that with other providers yet. The peer-to-peer -peer marketplace with the precious metals is also unique. And then now the option still with the watches is, of course, ingenious. So that was a very good idea from you guys. And there are just a lot of people who are interested in watches and maybe not so interested in gold and silver. And they might come here for the watches, but when they go here, they see the silver, the gold, and maybe they develop an interest in silver and gold. And so these different offers support each other. And that's one of the concepts that we have here now in the reserve with build-up. Now, if we continue to go in that direction here to the safe deposit boxes, what these lines are. In this room, there are practically five small rooms. So that when someone takes their safe deposit box, they can go into the room and can then practically take his box, things in and out, and so on. So anonymous, or where you can't be seen shielded. Exactly. Of course, we also need water security systems there. And those are practically the connections that are built along. 12,500 safe deposit boxes and five private rooms where people can then practically fill their boxes. So those can be rented from you guys on an annual basis? Exactly, which is special with these boxes. So in Singapore, there are virtually no safe deposit boxes from banks anymore. They used to have some, but they're almost all rented out. And it's very rare that you can get that again because the banks don't actually build them anymore. Then there are boxes from Certis Cisco. That's one of the biggest operators of these boxes in Singapore. But one of the problems of the boxes is that they can only take six kilos in weight. And we had a customer who bought quite a lot of silver from us, stored them in the boxes, and since then that six kilo limit has been heavily controlled. Oh my God. And that's why when we built this, we wanted to make sure we had stronger boxes. And that's why we're at least 16 kilos here. That's one of the improvements that we've made practically in the pits. Of course, the good thing here now is that you have a bank independent location. So you don't have a safe deposit box at the bank. That should be avoided at all costs. There can be a bank holiday that a bank simply closes and then you can't get to your safe deposit box. You don't have this problem here. As a foreigner, I can rent a safe deposit box without having to live in Singapore, right? Right, and the important thing with these boxes, which sometimes people are not so aware of when you rent the building, then you always have a huge problem because as soon as you put boxes up, and then all of a sudden the rent triples and you can't move the boxes, then you have a huge problem. That means you should really only store somewhere if the whole building is also part of the company, so that you have some permanence. We're investing about $70 million now in this whole building. That means we're investing a lot of capital and the building is going to be there for the long term. There's no landlord that can kick us out. So that's the important thing with boxes like this. Yes, very good, yes. So a total of almost 90 million in investment here now for the building, with the building purchase price. Around 70 million Singapore dollars. So in euros, that's maybe more. Is that already including the purchase price of 18 million? Yeah, we're getting it pretty cheap because we were able to do... Interesting that a lot of companies want to be part of the project because they want to show in their want to show in their portfolio that they have built the reserve. That's why we were able to bring the prices down. 
because for many companies it was okay to have very little profit because that's what they want to have with the portfolio item. That was one of the reasons that we were able to get it for that 70 million Singapore dollars is actually quite a bit more than what you would otherwise have to invest. Because it's a flagship for all the companies involved. Exactly. This is still the fourth floor. This is a different part of the building. This is where the stairs will come to be able to go up to the fifth floor. This is where you can see these walls. This is going to be this onyx facade. The nice thing with the onyx is it's a natural stone. The light comes through. Depending on the position of the sun, the light will practically change. That's one piece that gives the whole building charm. Where we are now, that's going to be our back offices will become, so our offices from the company, accounting will sit here, customer service will be out front here. And in front of us are the elevators where the customers will come up. This will be all reception hall. Yes, this central zone, this is about an 8 meter zone, these are basically open zones. Here on this side will come the watch workshop. This is where the watches will be serviced, identified and so on and so forth. That's about 200 square feet. of laboratory, so to speak. Watches here, silver bullion here, and then here we have the experience center. When a customer comes in, we're going to build a little version of the vault here so that people can see what gold and silver is all about. You can then look down here, and this is the silver vault. You're going to stack the silver up to about 12 meters high. Here we are about 18 meters high. You look down about 6 meters to the top silver bars, which are stored here. This zone is where all the software development and IT comes in. We have Silver Bullion, which is the main company. We have the Safe House, which is the vault company. And we have the Reserve, which is the building. And then we have Little Bit. Little Bit is the software development company that builds virtually all of the software that we're using here. And also the Cash Gold Token. Well, that's from another company as well. Other company. Here we are on the fifth floor. The fifth floor is the lounge area for wealth managers. When a visitor comes here and he brings a client, he would then go here to the fifth floor. At the end here is a bar and is also an area where you can have a meal. There are a lot of meeting rooms here and we also have offices that can be rented. If we go in this direction, These are offices and meeting rooms. There's a skylight up here which allows natural light to come in. And now we come to the silver cliff. Right, this is the silver cliff. This is kind of a balcony. Where we'll have steel windows. You can practically sit here and you can look down. You can now, if you bring a customer, Bring in, when I say customer now, that means a bank or another company that has a customer that's interested in buying gold or buying silver and asks for the physical. If someone is a member of the reserve, then the wealth manager or the banker can bring their client here and can say, we're going to get the coffee from the bar. Look down here, and then it's explained in practical terms how the silver and gold that belongs to the client, in that, yes, it is sold directly to the client, the insurance, 
what all is protected with, how the gold is tested, and then, of course, this story we talked about before. That's just Singapore jurisdiction. And the idea with this zone is just that not... All customers have to be our customers, silver bullion customers, but that we also want to work with other parties who have customers who want to install 10 to 15% of their assets in physical gold, of their assets in physical. And nowadays there are more and more people who have these requirements and banks usually don't have a good, and banks usually don't have a good answer for that. That's why we said, if the customers want that, then it is also in the interest of the bank or the financial company that they have a solution for the customer and we can work with that. And so that's one of the ideas that we're helping to build here. So it's a win-win situation, so to speak. And the customer gets an experience. It's kind of like Universal Studios that we're helping to build here. You can also learn how we test gold with different methods. So electroconductivity, ultrasound, x-ray, spectrography, density, magnetism, and so on. These are all different methods. So people can learn hands-on how things like this are done. And of course, we always like to talk about economics and debt and why that's not good. Why it makes sense to buy precious metals. And then back here, this is going to be the recording studio, the new one. Silver Bullion TV, as well as others, that can be rented out as well. As I said, next year we'll do our video there. Very good. Yes, then we've introduced the reserve so far, haven't we? Not everything, but the main things. Thank you for that. And if you're interested in learning more about Silver Bullion, below the video you'll find the link. Just visit the website, contact Silver Bullion, and maybe you will visit the reserve yourself in the future. In this sense, see you next time.